All right, guys, so today I'm going to be talking to you about how to write your own experimental procedure in science. So as scientists, as you guys know, uh, sometimes we have to do things like experiments or investigations. So uh, anytime that you're carrying out a scientific investigation or experiment, there is a procedure that go along, goes along with it. So what is a procedure? Well, all a procedure is is the step-by-step -step directions or the process by which you are gonna carry out that experiment. So you guys have seen these before in class. Uh, if we have a lab or an experiment to do, you guys have seen them, we usually provide them to you. Uh, but as real scientists, which you are always, but especially this summer, uh, your job is actually to figure out what that experimental procedure is. So how do you do that? Some things to keep in mind when you actually have to not just follow a procedure, but actually create your own. So the one thing that you want to think about is before you write a single number and start trying to write steps, you want to really think about what is the question that you're trying to answer. So what is it that you're trying to figure out? So you can't write a step-by-step -step direction of how to do something or what steps to follow until you really understand what it is that you're trying to do. So keeping in mind, what are you trying to figure out? That's going to lead you uh, to be able to find out what steps you need to follow to do it. Okay, another big one, you need to know what your variables are. So we're going to talk um, specifically about what you're going to do with these variables. But before you try to write a procedure, you need to make sure that you know specifically what are your variables. So what is your independent variable? And what is your dependent variable? Another thing you want to keep in mind is what is your hypothesis? I say this because your experimental procedure to, should lead you uh, to an answer to whether your hypothesis is being supported or is being refuted. So knowing what that hypothesis is is also going to help you uh, sit down and figure out what steps do I really want to follow in order to carry out this investigation. Okay, so some general tips that you want to keep in mind uh, or some procedures to follow when writing a procedure. So Big thing I want you guys to think of here, any time that you're carrying out a procedure, you have one thing in mind here. You are going to want to change that independent variable. So you're going to want to manipulate that variable somewhere in your steps. And then at some point towards the end of the experiment, you're going to want to measure the dependent variable in order to figure out what the impact or what the effect was of the manipulation of that independent. That is why it's so important to understand what each variable is because you are going to, again, want to manipulate or purposefully change that independent. And then somewhere in there, you're going to need to measure that dependent to find out how it was affected. Okay, what should your procedure look like? Well, it should be numbered. It should be step-by-step -step directions, just like the directions that you see in a lab when we do it in class. So it should be one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. Uh, step-by-step -step followable directions for what needs to happen to carry out your experiment, okay? A big tip here is, may not be the very first word, but somewhere close to the beginning of each step should be a verb, because remember, your procedure is telling someone what to do. So some examples here, it might be measure the height of the blank, place the cups on the table, weigh the mass of the blank. So somewhere in there, there needs to be a verb, because remember, your procedure is telling somebody what to do. It's something that can be followed. So therefore there needs to be a verb in there, a command. What are they going to do? Okay. And another thing to keep in mind here, a uh, general rule is that anyone should be able to take your procedure out of your hand, grab your paper, and they should be able to follow the exact same steps that you did and get the same results. So you want to keep in mind that whatever it is you're writing in this procedure is specific enough, it's detailed enough, and it's accurate enough that anyone can follow those steps and do exactly the same thing that you did. Okay, if we were to think about our plants, I'm probably not going to read this verbatim because you guys can do that. Uh, but quickly, if I think about what is it that I want to do uh, in this house plan example that we've been following through. So I'm looking at watering my plants different amounts and then measuring the change or uh, the effect on the height of the plant. So you can pause this video and you can look through. I kept it very brief, very simple here because I knew it was going to be on a slide. Um, but you can see here that I've uh, given specific steps. They all have some sort of command, a verb of what to do. Okay, you can see in here that I've packed in the manipulating or the changing of that independent variable, which is the amount of water I'm providing. And then at the very end, I've packed in that measuring of that 
dependent variable, which is the height of the plant, uh, to figure out what the effect was of that.